Go ahead. Thank you, Jen. Uh, following up on Nancy's question, did anyone know that the president was going to use the word genocide in his remarks? It seemed like a passing uh, remark or passing reference in a broader conversation about inflation. Well, it's, he's the president of the United States and the leader of the free world, and he is allowed to make his views known at any point he would like. So it was not scripted then? It wasn't pre-planned? Again, I think we shouldn't misunderstand who he is and where he stands in the totem pole, which is at the top. Okay. And then on the call today, can you clarify one other thing? There has been some reporting that the helicopters were not going to be part of the package, and then they went back into the package. Can you clarify if the call with Zelensky was the... Uh, item was, was the thing that put those helicopters back in the package. So, uh, so on this, um, I know there's been some different reporting and confusion, so I appreciate you asking. Uh, we are, of course, in constant conversations with the Ukrainians, as is evidenced by this morning and the two-hour call that Chairman Milley and Jake Sullivan had last week and what they need and how we can be helpful. It was unclear for a while um, from their side whether they wanted additional helicopters. We have provided them helicopters in the past, uh, and today they made clear they wanted them in, so we said, great. We, there are helicopters in the package. The first bus of migrants arrived in D.C. today. Uh, Texas Governor Greg Abbott making good on his promise to send migrants to the president's doorstep. Uh, I think you previously called it a publicity stunt. Is that still the view of the White House? Can you give us any reaction to this busload of migrants arriving here in D.C.? Well, these are all migrants who have been processed by CBP and are free to travel, so it's nice the state of Texas is helping them get to their final destination as they await in their, their outcome of their immigration proceedings, and they're all in immigration proceedings. And then on your statement this morning, um, you had mentioned in, in that statement that uh, the truck inspections uh, have led, that Governor Abbott has um, been conducting, <coughs> have led to disruptions for the food and automobile supply chains and rising prices for families. So is the White House blaming Greg Abbott for inflation? Well, I think we're trying to state the facts of what his another political stunt that we're seeing happen and the impact of it. Um, and what we're seeing is right now, factually, there's over $1 million in trade crossing over the U.S.-Mexico border every minute. These actions are impacting people's jobs and the livelihoods of hardworking families in Texas and across the country. That's not a political statement. That's a statement of fact. I'd also note that what we're seeing with these unnecessary inspections of trucks, uh, transiting ports of entry between Texas and Mexico are significant delays which are resulting in a drop in commercial traffic of up to 60 to 70 percent in some ports. And that is significantly impacting the local and regional supply chains to the point that trade associations, officials, and businesses are calling for the Texas governor to reverse their self, this self-inflected gridlock. I'd also note that CBP officers are very good at their jobs, uh, and Texas DPS does not need to replace CBP at the southern border. CBP has conducted a record number of drug seizures with more than 900,000 pounds of narcotics seized just in FY 2021. So the economic impact here, something that people of all political stripes are calling for a reversal of, is something that we think is significant and we felt should be shouted out. And then last one, does the White House still view inflation as transitory? That is the view of the uh, Federal Reserve and outside economists and they all continue to project it will come down this year.